All right. Okay. Um, let's start in a general sense. And can you describe to me the climate in China? Well, the climate in China, unfortunately, this year is uh, is definitely getting more restrictive. Um, the, the Olympics are opening in August, and the Chinese government had made all kinds of promises about how it was going to pr protect and expand human rights in this Olympic year. But uh, but clearly, they're making an attempt to uh, to control and monitor and and suppress dissident activity before the Olympics. Um, what type of you know, just for anyone who needs to who doesn't know. Describe what type of government they have there. Well, the Chinese government is, is still the traditional, it's the Communist Party, the Chinese Communist Party, single party rule, absolutely no, uh, no democracy of any meaningful way at the federal level. Um, it's, uh, it, I'll start that again. Sure. Okay. Um, the Chinese government uh, is still the Chinese Communist Party. It's, uh, it's embarked on a, on a major political experiment in which it's, uh, it's encouraging open markets and a kind of freewheeling market capitalism, but it maintains tight political control. Um, in Yang's article, he wrote that China is permeated with fear. What do you think he meant by that? Well, I think it's um, I think it's an interesting case where most Chinese citizens are are living this moment in which they have economic opportunities that they've never had before. They're pursuing you know a better standard of living, and uh, as long as you play by the rules, I think you can make it through every day uh, without uh, without incident. But uh, there are clear barriers and clear perimeters to what you can do, and I think most people encounter them every day in in internet activity. Uh, the internet is heavily censored, heavily monitored in China. If you go to an internet cafe and you try to visit certain websites, little icons will pop up on your screen warning you that you're trying to visit prohibited websites. Your every move that you make on the internet is 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 uh, tracked and monitored. The internet police will show up at the at the internet cafe um, if you sort of violate the boundaries. Um, and then for people who are actually involved in, you know, in what we think of as the dissident movement, just um, the, the p people who are looking at and proposing political reform, for example, they're constantly monitored. Uh, they're followed. Their phone calls are tapped. Uh, it's a complete surveillance state. Um, I mean, was it, how was this next year? This conversation uh, is this, can you hear this? I, it's off in the distance. Okay, so it's a I mean, if you wanted to just say something to them, it might not be a little bit. Uh, tell me about Yang. Describe him. Well, Yang is a, a dissident writer, political activist. Uh, he has spent 13 of the last 18 years in prison. He was uh, detained in, uh, after the democracy movement in 1989 convicted to 10 years in prison for counter-revolutionary activities, was released in 2001. In 2002, began posting a series of essays and articles and poems and short stories, uh, primarily on overseas websites uh, like Buxoon and Epic Times, and, uh, and also participated in a very kind of clever uh, internet election um, that was organized inside and outside China so, uh, that was modeled on sort of a velvet revolution um, in which they elected an alternative government as a sort of a you know, publicity stunt to, uh, to advertise the lack of democracy in China. He was uh, detained in December of 2005. He was actually sort of disappeared. He wasn't, his family wasn't informed of his arrest for more than a month um, until they received notice in late January that he was being detained. He was tried in April of 2006 in a closed, uh, closed three-hour trial um, and convicted to 12 years for subversion. Um, what, was, what did he write about? Well, according to the Chinese government, he wrote articles in which he attacked the leadership of the Chinese Communist Party and attempted to overthrow the existing system of power and the socialist system. Um, he wrote articles critical of the government and advocating multi-party democracy. Um, and the government was not happy with this because there's no real freedom of expression. You can't kind of talk badly about the government. Right? Exactly. I mean, the, you, 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 the, the, the boundaries are clear, and, and advocating an alternative form of government is clearly still off limits in China. So tell me about the 
Penn organization and why you've chosen Yang as the recipient? Well, interestingly, Yang is uh, a member of our colleague organization in China, the Independent Chinese Penn Center, which is a kind of an, a, a really extraordinary um, chapter, if you will, of Penn internationally. Independent Chinese Penn Center has about 200 members, about 100 of them are inside of China, 100 of them are in the diaspora, um, largely dissident writers, many of them the, the China's most prominent dissident writers. The center was formed in 2001 to really bring, China, uh, bring Penn's free expression activities inside of China. Um, and to uh, just to do what we do every day here in the United States without interference in China. Um, Yang is one of five members of the Independent Chinese Pen Center who are in prison right now. Um, they're, they've been extraordinarily courageous uh, and, uh, and they're operating under incredibly tight government scrutiny. Um, did he... What was, I'm sorry. <laughs> Why did he write under a pseudonym? Well, this is common practice. Um, you know, you can't, he couldn't even post or publish his articles inside of China because the web, you know, there are no websites that, that, that post these kind of dissident writings. He was posting them overseas. There's a long tradition of writing in Chi and under pseudonyms in Chinese letters um, that even precedes political repression or let's say, corresponds to different kinds of political repression through, through the centuries. Um, but uh, so he, you know, he published most of his articles under the, under the name Yang Tan Shui, um, and that includes an, not only uh, essays, but also poetry and, and uh, fiction. Um, can you describe the award? what you are giving to him? Sure. The, the Penn Barbara Goldsmith Award is you know, really our organization's highest honor. We give it every year to, uh, to an international writer who has defended freedom of expression at great personal risk and sacrifice. Um, it's our opportunity to showcase um, a particular case that's also emblematic. There are 39 writers and journalists who are in, in prison in China this year at this moment, and uh, we are in the middle of a large campaign that we're doing with our colleagues at the Independent Chinese Pen Center to win the release of all 39 of these writers and journalists before the Olympics in August. So in recognizing Yang, we're recognizing not only his extraordinary courage, but also the, the great leadership and, and, and courage of the Independent Chinese Pen Center, and, uh, and finally trying to call attention to the absolutely uh, appalling fact that in this Olympic year in which China has made great promises about expanding freedom of expression. 39 writers and journalists are still in prison. Um, and he's not well, correct? He's not well. He, um, he has, I'm going to have to check my notes quickly, sorry. Great, sorry. <laughs> Um, he's not well. He has diabetes. He has arthritis. You know, he's, as I said, he spent 13 of the last 18 years in prison. Um, and and uh, that obviously takes a toll. Um, and uh, so we are de definitely concerned. He's now been sentenced to 12 years. He's in the third year of a 12-year of a sentence. Um, and we're very concerned that he is physically not up for that long of a prison term. Here. In America, we have freedom of expression, freedom of speech. It's, it's almost like we take it for granted in a way when you see somebody overseas and it's so quick that they're just, that that's it. You know, it's like there, there is no freedom of speech. Why do you think that that is so important? Well, freedom of speech is just, it's, it's recognized under international human rights agreements as one of the essential rights that are inherent in, in humanity. I mean, this is part of who we are, the need to speak and think and, and express ourselves freely. It, the, the, the international law, and just like our First Amendment, recognizes that we are not fully human unless we're allowed to, to, um, to seek, receive, and, and impart information freely without any restrictions. Um, and uh, it's just a very inter basic in, um, uh, universal human impulse. Um, governments, of course, try to restrain it because it is often a threat to political establishments and power structures. Um, knowing that there's such a, uh, you know, 
that when you live in a communist society, you know you can't speak that way or you can't talk about the government that way. Why do you think he still chose to do it, even though he knew that most likely he would go to jail? Well, I mean, it's you know, there's there are among us people who are just simply heroic by nature. I think they are they are leaders. They are just unable to bear um, what they see as uh, unjust systems, and they're determined to use their abilities and even their freedom, if necessary, to um, to press for change. I mean, it's an interesting moment in China. I could see where you would you would you would want to take a risk right now because so many things are changing and yet this one small set of kind of uh, uh, of taboo subjects remains off limits and um, that would be very difficult to 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 stand for I think if you were a writer and intellectual um, who who believed in the universal nature of freedom of expression for example and of of of, um, of democratic involvement the freedom to assemble the freedom to express yourself the freedom to, to choose your own leaders um, so it's um, you know he's clearly an extraordinarily courageous person who's dedicated his life to uh, to advancing um, political reform in China great that's a great sound <laughs> um, so is there a call to action? Well, absolutely. Uh, you know, we, this is a, a critical year for China. It has insisted upon you know, putting itself onto the world stage by hosting the Olympics. Um, I, it's supposed to be, in some sense, China's coming out party uh, you know, as, a, as a, a, an emerging international leader. And in order to secure the Olympics, it made some very specific promises about protecting and expanding human rights. Um, and uh, it, it has unfortunately not only not honored those promises, but seems to be um, this year intent on re further restricting human rights. This is our, the world's opportunity to say this is unacceptable and we have you know, 100 days until the Olympics, uh, and there are 39 writers and journalists in prison. Everybody, I think, every writer around the world should use this opportunity to say, this is not acceptable. We want our colleagues free. There's a, pit there's a pen petition, um, which you can find on the internet at www.pen.org slash China petition, calling for the release of all the writers and journalists in prison in China. Please go on the web, sign the petition, and uh, let's work to get our, our colleagues free. Um, as far as uh, his history, before he became, before he went to jail, was he a writer, at, was that, or a journalist, was that his position? Yeah, yes, I think he's always been a writer, um, and, and he's always chosen writing as a way of sort of advancing political activity, and. Um, political ideas. So he's an essayist, a poet, a short story writer, a novelist, um, and, uh, and as I say, a member of the Independent Chinese Pen Center. Um, you wanted to talk about uh, last year's um, awards. Sure. I mean, just as an example of, of the kinds of pressure that the Independent Chinese Pen Center operates under, and also the way it's you know, doing pens work in China. Every year, the Independent Chinese Pen Center stages an annual awards dinner, which is sort of its version of the Penn Gala. For the last four years, it has done it under intense government surveillance. Uh, the government has posted guards inside and outside the dinner. This year, however, in December, the government decided that the dinner simply would not happen. They called up the, the they had, by, by surveilling members of the Penn Center, they knew it was going to happen. They got the hotel to call the leadership and, and say that they had canceled the reservation. They called the leaders and warned them not to, to attend. They detained the, the two people who are supposed to be the Freedom to Write and Literary Award honorees of the evening to prevent them from coming to the event, posted guards outside the, the homes of the officers of the organization, and kept them there throughout the weekend so that the organization could not have its dinner in, in, uh, in December. Then so we want to talk about the verdict. Sure. We want to read a bit of the verdict. Sure. I've got it if you need it. 
Yeah, no, I've got it right here. I think it's just the opinion of the cord is probably the best part. Right. Okay. In this case, you describe what you're reading. Sure. Wait one second until this door closes. Yep. And this is voiceover? Yeah. I'm just going to wait till that. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is from the verdict of the Zhang Jian Intermediate People's Court in the case against Yang, Zhang, Yang Tongyan. It is the opinion of this court that defendant Yang Tongyan organized, plotted, and carried out actions to subvert state power and overthrow the socialist system, that these actions constitute the crime of subversion, and that these were major criminal activities and should be punished according to the law. His collusion with organs, organizations, or individuals overseas in carrying out the above-mentioned crimes should be severely punished according to the law. Moreover, due to his past conviction and subsequent prison sentence for organizing or leading a counter-revolutionary group and his, com com his repeat commission of the crime of subversion after his release, severe punishment should be imposed according to the law. Defendant Yong Tongyan posted numerous articles on overseas hosted websites attacking the leadership of the Communist Party and the socialist system. Moreover, he, had, he, had, he adhered to the platform and charter of the China Democrat, sorry, Moreover, he adhered to the platform and charter of the China Democracy Party and secretly formed and recruited members for a local branch of the China, China Democracy Party. There is sufficient evidence that he conspired to overthrow. Um, this read is that last before that thing that you just read. Yeah, which one? The Moreover. Moreover, sure. Moreover, he adhered to the platform and charter of the China Democracy Party and secretly formed and recruited members for the Jiangsu Anhui branch of the China Democracy Party. There is sufficient evidence that he consp conspired to subvert China's state power. At the same time, defendant Yang Tongyan received overseas assistance from organs, organizations, or individuals overseas, which he used to assist persons who have been convicted of endangering state security and assist their close relatives. This is both subjective and objective proof of deliberate criminal action by defendant Yong Tongyan to subvert state power, and therefore this court cannot accept defendant Yong Tongyan's defense or the submission of his defen defense attorney. This court rules as follows. Defendant Yang Tongyan is sentenced to 12 years imprisonment with subsequent deprivation of political rights for four years for the crime of subversion. Equipment used for criminal purposes, the IBM 600 compatible laptop computer, the HP printer, and two Nokia mobile phones will be compensated. Com be compensated. <laughs> <laughs> Equipment used for criminal purposes, the IBM 600 compatible laptop computer, the HP printer, and two Nokia mobile phones will be confiscated. Great. Um, I'm going to ask you to read this one poem. Sure. Yeah, that's right. This is from a poem called Spiritual Tours Over Land of China. The electrical fence and high wall quietly guard around it against all. The wilderness, far mountain and cloudy sky. In a prisoner's heart, the constant universes lie. The benefactions from spring rain and summer dew often moisten the quiet hearts to grow. The smelting trials of autumn frost and winter snow, the praised singing always draw. In looking afar, in dream and in longing, I went all over the vast land of China, beauty of mountains and rivers, and compassion for everything, expelled the worries that had disturbed public feeling. The Creator's immeasurable grace offered China largesse, such as painting and poetry, such as brocade and embroidery. Okay. It's um, actually quite lovely. It's yeah. very Auden-esque. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice. Um, the, his lawyer, mm -hmm. 
Yes. Who's going to be receiving the award from him? Absolutely. Talk to me about his lawyer. Let me get my notes because it is really actually. Lee, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Lee Jiang Kiang. Yes. Also goes by Lee Lu, correct? Yep. I should take my own. I'm going to re record this. Hmm. Yes. Let me just read my notes real sure. quick. <laughs> Li Jiang Kiang, the uh, who is sorry. Sorry, start from the top. Li Jiang Kiang, who is with us tonight to accept the award on behalf of Yang Tongyan, is uh, is Yang, Tong, Yang Tongyan's lawyer and is also a member of the Independent Chinese Pen Center and a writer. Um, Mr. Li has represented several members of the Independent Chinese Center and. I'm just stop you. I'm okay. Sorry to stop you. Don't look into the camera. Look oh, I'm me. sorry. I don't know why I was doing that. <laughs> I totally okay. forgot that. It's That's okay. what I totally forgot. Um, <laughs> Li Jiangqiang is a lawyer and a writer and also a member of the Independent Chinese Pen Center. He, um, he has represented a number of our colleagues from the Independent Chinese Pen Center and in fact 10 of the 39 writers and journalists who are now in prison in China. He was uh, disbarred in 2003 for circulating a petition that 100 lawyers signed that was uh, asking for the abolition of the charge of subversion which has been used against Yang Tongyan and so many other writers in China. Uh, he was allowed to begin practicing again in 2005 and represented Yang Tongyan uh, at the beginning of his legal proceedings and uh, then was again uh, disbarred last year or had his uh, license to practice removed. And he's going to be, uh, can you say he's going to be receiving the award again? Right, right. Mr. Li is coming, uh, is with us tonight. Uh, Li, Li Jiang Kiang is with us tonight to accept the award on Yang Tong Yan's behalf. Great. Is there anything else you feel that we are missing? I think that's, um, I think that's it. Okay, good. How's that? Does that sound I good? it's really good. Okay, great. Um, and then from Bob, we can stop. And then from Bob, we, uh, we can talk more about internet.